In this tutorial, I will be going over how to set up the Analog to Digital Converter with Computation, or ADCC for short, on the PIC 16F18855 Express Board. The ADCC featured on newer PIC devices has different modes featuring Basic, Accumulate, Average, Burst Averaging, and Low Pass Filtering. The ADCC peripheral also has the ability to do threshold comparisons and also features a capacitive voltage divider, which is great for touch sensing applications. In this video, however, I will be using the ADCC to first print values to a serial terminal only if the value falls outside of a certain range. Through this threshold comparison, you can monitor your system without needing any CPU intervention to do so and generate an interrupt if certain criteria is met. The second portion of this video will focus on the ADCC's burst averaging mode. Through this burst averaging mode, you can filter out noise on your ADCC to reduce the amount of false positives within your system and produce cleaner and more concise signal readings. I have my MPLAB Express project configured to use the PIC16F18855 and the MPLAB code configurator opened. From inside the code configurator, I will add a USART peripheral. I will enable the transmit checkbox so that I can transmit the data coming from the ADCC. Additionally, I will check the redirect STDIO to USART box so that I can use printf and putchar statements within code. Lastly, I will connect the TX pin of the USART peripheral to pin RC0 so that I can communicate with our serial monitor via USB connection. Next, I'll add a timer to peripheral. This timer will work as a trigger source for the ADCC. The ADCC should be triggered every 100 milliseconds. Therefore, I will set low frequency internal oscillator as a clock source. Next, I will change the prescaler so that the lower value of the timer period is less than 100 milliseconds and the upper value of the timer is greater than 100 milliseconds. I will also set the timer period field to 100 milliseconds. Next, I will add an ADCC peripheral. For the first part of this tutorial, I will be operating in basic mode. Averaging and threshold comparison can be used together, but for the sake of this tutorial, I will use them separately. First, I will set the auto conversion trigger field to timer 2. Error calculation is the value that will be used for the threshold comparison. I will change this parameter to actual result versus set point. Based on the data sheet, error calculation equals actual result minus set point when this parameter is set. Therefore, I will set my set point to zero. By doing this, I am setting my error calculation to be equal to my actual ADCC result. Next, I will enable threshold interrupts and set this parameter to outside window. This means that if the ADCC reading is below the lower threshold or above the upper threshold, an interrupt will be generated. I will set the lower threshold to 300 and my upper threshold to 800. Therefore, I should expect values to be printed out only if they are below the value of 300 and above the value of 800. Next, I need to navigate to the bottom of the ADCC page and check the Enable ADC Threshold Interrupt checkbox. The last thing that I need to do in MCC is set pin RA4 to an ADCC input. RA4 is the pin connected to the potentiometer on the express board. Click on the pin module field in Project Resources. In the pin module field, I will change the name of the pin to something easier to remember. This should be all that I need for the setup of our project, so I will go ahead and generate the project. Inside of the express main.c file, I will first uncomment global and peripheral interrupts. Without doing this, your interrupts will not happen. Additionally, I will need to add this ADCC start conversion function before the while one loop. Although our timer is triggering our ADCC, this start conversion function sets the ADCC channel. Without calling this function or setting the ADCC channel ourselves before the while one loop, the ADCC will not know which channel it is supposed to be reading from. Next, inside the ADCC.c file, navigate to the bottom and you will see an ADCC default interrupt handler function. Inside of this function, I will print the conversion result of the ADCC. I am using the standalone data visualizer as the serial terminal for this project. A link to where this can be downloaded will be provided in the description. As you can see, data only prints when my value is outside of the window 300 to 800. For the next part of this tutorial, I will cover the burst averaging capability on the ADCC. In order to use burst averaging mode, I will first set the operating mode to burst average. Next, I am going to change my clock divisor to something slower so that the average of my ADCC is taken over a longer period of time. I will set this so that my conversion time is about 1 millisecond per ADCC read. Additionally, the error calculation needs to be changed. According to the datasheet, by setting the error calculation to filtered value versus set point, 
error calculation will be equal to filtered value minus set point. The filtered value is what I want to read, therefore I will set this parameter accordingly. Next I will need to change the threshold interrupt to enabled. I will also set repeat to 32. By setting the threshold interrupt field to enable, this now means that the ADCC will always generate an interrupt regardless of the threshold comparison result. This threshold comparison is only done after the ADCC has finished its set number of repeats which is set to 32. Therefore I will get a threshold interrupt every time burst averaging has completed. Lastly I will set the accumulator right shift to 5. This means that once the ADCC has finished accumulating all 32 samples, the resulting value will be right shifted by 5. For this part of the tutorial I will be using a water sensor. This sensor by itself is very noisy without averaging. I'll connect this sensor to pin RB0 and change the sensor name to something easier to remember. This is all of the modification that is needed for burst averaging mode, therefore I can go ahead and click the generate button. Navigating back to the main.c file, the only thing that I will change is the name inside of the start conversion function. Inside of the adcc.c file, I will still be printing inside of the default interrupt handler function. However, to plot this data in a graph using the data visualizer, I will need to use the put char command instead of printf. Additionally, this time I would like to see the filtered value from the adcc. Therefore, I will use adcc get filtered value instead of adcc get conversion result. Through the data visualizer, I have set up two sensors, one sensor with averaging and one sensor without. As you can see, the sensor with averaging is a lot more stable than the sensor without averaging. For more information about the ADCC and its capabilities, please click on the link provided in the description below.